I don't even know how to start this video. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa and I'm here to talk about how I got diagnosed with colorectal cancer. There, I said it. <sighs> that was so hard. It's gonna be a very hard video for me to film. And I said I wasn't gonna cry, but I already wanna cry, which is crazy. I have been diagnosed with early stage colorectal cancer. I am only 27 years old which is not normal uh, for anyone my age to be diagnosed with this type of cancer. What is colorectal cancer? So colorectal cancer is basically a cancer in your colon or rectum. As you guys can see, the rectum and the large intestine are basically the colon. And mine was actually in between the rectum and the sigmoid colon. So that's why they call it colorectal cancer. So I'm gonna get to how I found out I had cancer. Um, it all started, I'm gonna say about a few months ago. So we are in October right now of 2020. And I started getting some symptoms around, I'm gonna say maybe six to eight months ago, possibly. But I never really noticed it. I never noticed a big change. But the first big change that I did notice was, and this might be too much info for you guys so if you guys don't like talking about like stools or passing gas or pooping or poop at all then i would say just skip this part go to the just keep skipping because there's gonna be a lot of stuff about that just a warning but um i started noticing that my my stools started changing and i figured maybe did i eat something did i i felt like i ate something and I got, I don't know, a stomach flu, but my stool started changing um, very drastically to the point where I just wasn't feeling good. I was feeling tired all the time. I, I, I always had like stomach cramps, like, like if you just had the stomach flu, that's what it felt like to me. Back at the beginning of September, I started experiencing a lot of lightheaded um, feeling like dizziness, um, wanting to uh, just faint and, I just figured, you know what, I'm just gonna go to urgent care. I'm gonna go see my primary. Um, so I went to an urgent care, got my hemoglobin tested and my glucose. And my hemoglobin, which was really weird, it was pretty normal for me. Um, it, as again, if you guys ha don't know, um, I do have a blood disorder and it's called hereditary spherocytosis. And if you guys want to want me to disclose what exactly that is, I can go ahead and make another video. If you guys want to know what that is, um, just leave a comment. And then if you guys want to know what that is, um, I'll go ahead and make another video because I don't want to make this video too long. And my, my hemoglobin was normal. Um, my glucose was pretty low. I gave them all my family history. I do, um, my family does suffer a lot from cancer. But there's a lot of cancer in my family. And as you guys, some of you may know, I on one of my previous videos, um, I just recently lost my mom in June of 2020, so just a few months ago. Um, so it's been very hard. I have my nails painted periwinkle for her. So yeah, <laughs> uh, periwinkle was her ribbon color because it, she suffered from esophageal cancer. So I told my primary a lot of the symptoms I've been having and we just thought, honestly, we just thought it was probably like type 1 diabetes or my sugar just dropping. I was not pregnant. I was not pregnant, okay? <laughs> but um, I just, I didn't know. So I knew something was wrong with me. I just didn't know what. So then soon after, like maybe two, maybe a week later or two weeks later, I started, I started noticing some blood in my stool and it, it wasn't just a little bit like when you like wipe no it was like subs like you can tell in the toilet like there was a lot of blood there and at first it wasn't really alarming to me it wasn't really concerning until one night i i went to the bathroom and i felt like an urge to go number two but nothing like it was i can't explain it it was like so weird because i didn't feel like anything was there but i felt pressure and i ended up going to the bathroom and there was a lot of blood and i went straight to the er 
I didn't know what else to do. I needed something to just confirm to me that there's nothing there. It was okay. I was really scared. So I went to the ER and my ER experience was not very nice. Um, it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I was there for 12 hours. <laughs> I was not very happy. I wasn't feeling good. After the ER, I was told basically that my symptoms, I just had a little bit of inflammation and that's probably what it was. And I felt like I wasn't really um, taken seriously and I just had a gut feeling that something was wrong. It was, something was wrong with me and I didn't want to go home and rest. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that there's absolutely nothing there and I shouldn't be worried. People, I felt like I felt like I was treating, treated like I was crazy. That's what it felt like. I felt like I was being treated like I was crazy, like I'm making these things up in my head. And I wasn't. I was honestly, something was wrong and I just didn't know. I was so frustrated with everybody. And I'm like, there is something wrong. Can you, someone please just help me? All I needed was help confirm that nothing is there so i went ahead and called i had a gastroenterologist which <sighs> thank the lord for him because he took me seriously and was he knew my family history and i had previously a, a procedure from him um i had an egd which is the procedure where they put the camera down your um down your throat to see if there's anything there obviously because of my mom she had cancer and i just wanted to eliminate that possibility and i was going to get scheduled for a colonoscopy but because of covid it got canceled and i couldn't get my procedure done so i pushed it I, i'm not gonna lie i pushed it back i pushed it back and i should enough and i regret it so much um i just pushed it back because you know my mom was battling her cancer and I just wanted to be there with her and then after that I started working full time again and then children couldn't go back to school so I had to deal with finding babysitters it was just a very very stressful time for me and I am so glad that that doctor took me seriously and scheduled me for a colonoscopy um, October 7th of 2020 <sighs> Man, everything just happened so fast. On October 7th, 2020, the two days prior, I had to obviously prep for my colonoscopy, which I had to drink and I had to, oh, I had to poop my brains out, like no joke. Just all day, all night, had no sleep up until the time of the procedure. And then I told the doctor, if I go, I'm sorry. Like. I just can't control it. From what I remember when I woke up after the procedure, I had David with me, obviously, and I was kind of in and out. I was really high on drugs. <laughs> I was saying some crazy stuff, I think. I don't even remember. I need to ask David because I honestly don't remember. But all I remember is David walking in. It's like fast forward. It was so weird. He was just saying that right away he found a mask. It was about a golf ball size mass. And all I remember is that he said that he took biopsies and from the looks of it, that it does look very concerning. He possibly thinks that it could be cancer, but he, he doesn't want to say for sure until I get the pathology back. The pathology just means that whatever biopsies he took, the tissues, they do studies on them, make sure that yeah, it is cancer, no it's not. They basically do all that for pathology. So then soon after that, I got scheduled to see a surgeon um he was very kind very caring i was very nervous um about this appointment and this appointment was i believe two weeks two weeks after that colonoscopy so they were moving pretty fast when i met the surgeon he kind of went over everything and he just basically told me like you know what i went over your pathology you do have early stage cancer we need to go ahead and he just hit all the bullet points you know he just put the, all the information out there and I get it some doctors are like not supposed to be emotional or anything but being a patient is it was very hard listening to what he was gonna say <sighs> I 
already knew what he was gonna say. I just didn't want to hear it, you know? I was in denial. Okay, now that I let that out, okay, my emotions are back together. So after I talked to the surgeon, he was amazing and went over all the questions that we had. He basically did tell me that they're gonna get together with, we do have a cancer center here in the valley where I live. He's gonna create a team of doctors that obviously are gonna take urgency in this case. At this moment right now, I'm just going off of what he told me, what my plan could possibly be, but I'm not gonna know until November 4th um, exactly what that treatment plan is gonna be. I do not know. But from the research I've been doing and from what he told me is that wherever my tumor or my mass is located, um, they might proceed with doing chemotherapy first, then doing an, I believe it's called an LAR surgery, which they remove that part of the colon and they're gonna give me a stoma. Um, if you guys don't know what a stoma is, a stoma is basically um, they create a little hole in your abdomen and pull out a small intestine um, out into your wall and so you you have a stoma bag which your stool collect in there and you would have to change it he did tell me that I probably if I do have the surgery I probably will only have the stoma for six to eight weeks which is great um, I know that there's some people from my research that I've been doing that they have it for the rest of their life it sucks but you gotta do what you gotta do right so they might they might place a port um which i kind of made a joke about it when i was there and i was like um i don't know if you guys can see but i already had a port because uh, of my blood disorder when i was little a port is just something that goes under your skin and it looks like a little button and they go ahead and draw blood from it so i yeah i already had one so i was like Am I going to have another one? Because this side is all jacked up. So can we do it on this side? And he was like, yeah, we'll do it on that side. That's what I do. I am a nervous, uh, when I'm sad or I want to cry, I kind of want to joke about something to keep my mind off of it. So that's the type of person I am. If you're like that, please tell me because I don't want to be the only one. I completely forgot that he did mention that with the radiation um it's gonna cause me to basically not be able to have children in the future if i was planning to which i can possibly freeze my eggs i don't know there's just so many questions going on with that but i also was told that i could put be put into pre-menopause a lot of my hormones are gonna be off the wall crazy all over the place and one day after i saw the surgeon just got a bunch of calls about appointments i got an appointment for genetics he scheduled me for another mri or an, an mri to basically give me an exact stage of where i'm at um what stage if either stage one stage zero stage one a sta there's like so many stages and it's like the worst is being stage four and really early on is obviously stage zero which i am very thankful for being that i I'm, I'm hoping that it's from what we know it sounds like it's very early stage which i'm very thankful very thankful for oh yeah i also got a radiation um specialist chemotherapy genetics so yeah i got like just a bunch of appointments and i ended up going to target and getting a planner because I just had so many appointments. Mentioned I just stepped down part time at my current job. First person I told her obviously was my manager and just letting them know the possibility of the future where I might not be there. Um, I don't know what my reaction is gonna be to chemotherapy. Some people are up and going um, after a day or two. Not that bad of, you know, not that bad. And then some people get really, really sick. So I don't know how I'm gonna react to chemo or radiation or any of that. So I just wanted to go ahead and keep a very open communication with my manager. November 4th, uh, 2020 is the day that I'm gonna see the surgeon again. And that, that day I'm anxious, anxiously waiting, just waiting and waiting. Um, where they're gonna tell me what my plan, what they're gonna do, you know, whether they're gonna do chemo first 
or surgery i don't know why i just want to know already i'm very happy that they're moving very quickly which is crazy to me i feel very blessed um aside from having cancer i feel very blessed that these doctors are they're just moving very quickly and they're getting me in as an urgent case which makes me feel special i guess um so that's a good thing i just want to say that it is a good thing that they did catch it early um my prognosis is 80 to 90 percent chance so that's very promising and that is very very high before i end the video obviously i want to say that i wanted to film this not because i want people to feel bad for me i want people to to know that if you in your gut like you have a feeling like something is wrong with you something is just not sitting right and that you just feel like something is wrong and the doctors are just kind of like eh, you're too young that's that angered me so much oh they kept saying you're young you're you're fine just go home and rest stop complaining no if i was any other person that was kind of like eh, whatever i would have went home i would have went home and not cared and not checked up and not followed up imagine imagine just imagine if i didn't get checked up where i would be four or five couple years from now oh if you guys have a gut feeling that something is wrong with you please follow up or get a second opinion because that's exactly what i did and look what happened i'm not saying you're gonna have cancer i'm not saying you know just if you feel uncomfortable with their decision i would say get a second opinion elsewhere i don't care how young you are i've seen people who have with all my research that i've done who have it, it is rare i'm not gonna lie it is rare but there's so many young people who have colorectal cancer to the from the ages 21 to 18 27 34 like that's very young just go ahead and do it there's nothing wrong with checking there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor with concerns because i was at the doctor all the time like my glucose something 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 and sure enough i'm very lucky to have found this very early and they are able to hopefully stop it and remove it and for me to live many, many, many more years. At first, I felt, when they told me everything, I felt just hurt. I don't even know how to explain it. Betrayed? Is that even a thing? My own body betrayed me. Um, I was very sad, obviously. I was scared. And then after like a day or two, I was, I was very angry. I was very angry, just bitter and angry. I kept saying, why me? Why me? I feel like I've already suffered so much watching my mom, my niece, my family. After that, I just kind of felt like I was happy it was me. Happy that it was me and not the other way around where it was my children. God forbid, oh my God. Or my, if I'm just happy it's me this time. And the reason I say that is that I'm glad it's me. It's that I think I'm strong enough to go through this. I think I can I can get through this. I can do it. I'm I'm strong. I am, you know, I've been through so many medical procedures, so many surgeries. I feel like because I know what it's like and what I'm gonna I know what to expect. If you're watching this, thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. That is it for today. Stay well. Stay happy. Till next time. Bye.